Yud is good, yud is your boys, I'm back here with another video, and in this video today, guys, We've got new season rewind cards coming to NBA 2K24, my team. So in this video, we're going to be briefly going over, talking about each and every one of them, a lot of them really briefly, really quickly, and then obviously the set rewards. Now, briefly, I just want to say, I do not think either Cat or Jalen Browner is going to be worth you guys locking in. Why? Well, I feel like a lot of these guys, you know, that you need to get those cards, like let's say like even a Diamond Keegan Murray, a Diamond Anthony Simons, those cards are not going to be usable. So let's say like you, you know, lock in for Cat. How many cards are you going to get that really are going to be used? That's the issue I do see. However, I do think there are going to be some really solid budget options. Now, who, like, uh, you know, there are some solid options. Like, Don Taxim could be really solid. Miles Turner could be really solid. The uh, Caleb Houston could be really solid. Like, there are a couple of different guys that I think have some decent potential. Now, we're going to start it off on the Western Conference. Again, way at the bottom, we're going to start with Max Christie. Now, Max Christie, I remember last year in played out, people were running Max Christie because they're like, man, his release is absolutely elite. Now, this year, I'm going into it with shoot around, and, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll say this, it's fine. It's not necessarily great. So, like, Max Christie's fine, not great, only 6'5 at the shooting guard position. I just don't think he's going to be, you know, next level good. He's going to be probably fine. When, it, when you're talking about, you know, some of the best cards in the entire game, best budget cards in the entire game, I just do not know how much I can gas up that Max Christie card. Next up, guys, Trace Jackson Davis from Indiana. I'm actually impressed with what he's done for the Warriors in real life. Now, in 2K, let's start with his release really bad. So, I don't know what else Trace Jackson Davis is going to give you only 6'9". If you think Roy Hibbert has a bad release... Use Trace Jackson Davis's base. I mean, that release is absolutely horrible. That card is borderline going to be unplayable. So, I mean, as far as rubies are concerned, so far, we are 0 for 2 as far as usable cards or cards that could be really good. Casey Wallace up next. 6'3", obviously going to have point guard eligibility. Start with his movement. I mean, not great. Release is fine. Not a card that's going to be super good in my team. Release is obviously fine. I just feel like his movement is not great. Julius Schaller up next. Let's check him out for the Denver Nuggets. He's a card I don't really remember having in 2K ever. Like, I do not remember running this card at all. 6'6 six, six at the shooting guard position. Release-wise, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's it, it's relatively quick, I'd say. Kind of reminds me of the Alex Crusoe base, I would say. Relatively quick, maybe even quicker than the Alex Crusoe base. It's just weird because he really doesn't jump that high with it, but... I really think Schroeder could be really fine. I don't want to sit here and gas him up, say he's going to be a leap. But I think the card could definitely be a fine in my team. Jordan Clarkson up next. Let's talk about him a little bit. Remember, these cards won't be grindable. You might be able to grind for equal chance packs. Uh, so that would be the only thing as far as a grind. Like you might get an equal chance Ruby, equal chance Ami pack as, you're not, as you are grinding. But that would be the only thing. Now for Clarkson, he has a release where it's straight up and down, jumps pretty high. I actually don't mind it. 6-3 at the point guard position. The problem with Clarkson is he's just not going to play any defense. That's the big problem I see. And if, you know, you're not going to play any defense, it's hard for me to really, you know, hype you up or gas you too much. I don't, again, I don't want to hate on the card because I think Clarkson is fine with that release. But I just don't think he's, you know, the best uh, best option we do have in a my team. Dante Exum up next. 6-5, smooth release. Now, is his release as smooth as the Exum base was in 2K20? What would that have been? 2K22? I don't think so. X and base is still fine. He's still going to be really solid. He is 6'5". Feels like he's a lot larger with his player build. But just don't use Dante Hexum and expect his release to be super cheesy because you are ultimately going to be let down. Trey Murphy briefly up next for Trey Murphy. I, I'm a big fan of his game in real life. A lot of these cards are obviously breakout cards. Trey Murphy 6'8 at that small forward position. Release-wise, I actually like it. It's super kind of quick. It doesn't jump high, but it's super quick, easy to time, easy to green. Trey Murphy's going to be able to play a lot of defense. I'm super high on Trey Murphy going into tomorrow. So even if you get like an equal chance pack and you happen to get Trey Murphy out of there, 
I'm a big fan of him. Lengthy, can stretch the court. Give me Trey Murphy every day of the week. Zoo, he's going to be seven feet tall. Not going to be able to shoot the ball well. I've used him in play now. Obviously, he can't shoot, but going to be really slow as well. But he's going to be tall. Ever to rebound the ball. Nurkic up next. I mean, what do you want me to say on Yusuf Nurkic? His release is not good. He's one of the main reasons I'm not using the Suns in play now because I do not like Nurkic release. He might be able to, you know, be a stretch big. I bet his three ball is somewhat decent, but I just don't love his game. He's probably going to be relatively slow as well. Shangun up next. Shangun's interesting. Now, why is Shangun interesting? Well, can run the power forward position. Let's start there. 6'11 at the four. Depends on his three ball. Depends on his speed. Depends on his defense. Depends on a lot of things. But I think Shangun could be solid. I actually am shooting with him right now and shooting around, and I do not hate that release at all. For a budget big in my team, I think Shangun has a lot of potential. Again, I'm not trying to sit here and gas Shangun. I don't think he's going to be great. But if you, you know, can get him out of an equal chance pack or for free, do expect the card to be decent. Anthony Simons up next for the Portland Trailblazers. Let's start with this. He's going to be 6'3". Dame dribble style, it looks like. Release-wise, this year, it's actually good. And, and, and I don't want to say good, but it's way better than it has been in the past. In the past, Anthony Simons has had that, like, Penny Hardaway type base. Just been super slow, super methodical, just not great. This year, way quicker, easy to grind, easy to green, easy, uh, easy to time. I like Anthony Simons for what he is. Just realize he's going to still be an undersized point guard. Devin Vassell up next. We're winding it down for the Western Conference. So far, I'm a fan of Shangun and Trey Murphy, and that's about it. Devin Vassell, let's talk about him for the Spurs. He can get you a bucket in real life. Problem in 2K is he's only 6'5". Release-wise, let's check it out here for Devin Vassell. Not bad. Like, again, if I'd recommend if you want to see these guys in shoot around, all that type of stuff, just just load into shoot around, see what the cards get into. I think Devin Vassell is just fine. Release is interesting. I don't hate it, but remember, he's only 6'5. His release is not good enough to really, uh, you know, play him just because of his offensive ability. I think he needed a little bit more. Keegan Murray up next. Y'all know Keegan Murray's player boot's going to be pretty decent, going to be a good 3 and D option in my team. Card 6'8. Obviously going to shoot the ball incredibly. Release-wise is fine. Again, I don't want to sit here and gas his release, but it's fine. It, it's not great. But you can get it off relatively quick. He just doesn't jump very high, which I feel like makes it hard to time, hard to green. But it's fine. I, I can't sit here and just hype up Keegan Murray that much. But I do feel like offensively, he's going to be just fine. We all know what Desmond Bain's going to get into. Hopefully, his release is a little bit quicker. His release was super easy to time at the start of the game. Obviously, at this stage, we need a quick release. It's that simple, that easy. Headed to the Eastern Conference. We'll wait until Cat uh, for last. All I can say, Western Conference, not worth locking in. Some guys to highlight, Trey Murphy, Alperin, Shangu. For the East, AJ Green, he's going to be solid. Has, uh, you know, the pro, what is it, pro two fade, which is really good. Release is fine. Wish you could play point guard at the two. Just not necessarily great, but I can't hate on AJ Green. Going to be an absolutely sh absolute sharp shooter. And if you do get him, let's say, out of your equal chance pack, there are much worse options uh, in the game. Again, I'm not just trying to sit here and hype the card up, but I can't hate on the card either. He is just fine in my team. J Dayron Sharp up next. What do you really want me to say? I mean, he's going to be an anti interior big. I just don't expect too much out of him. Like, when it comes down to some of these budget guys, you can't expect a whole lot. Uh, and, and as far as Rubies are concerned, I'm just, I mean, Julian Strother is okay. But so far, I haven't really seen a ton else. Caleb Houston up next. Now, let's start with this for Caleb Houston. I think that says shooting guard eligibility, I think, at 6'8 with a, an immaculate release. Caleb Houston has so much potential in my team, and I'm not just saying that to gas him. He's got a ton of potential. 6'8", good release, can shoot the ball well. I'm thinking Caleb Houston, when it comes down to rubies, is going to be the best ruby that we do see tomorrow. Heading into Jalen Johnson. Now, if you've missed out on Jalen Johnson in the NBA this year, he has been absolutely balling. A 6'8", release-wise in my team or in 2K is obviously not good. You guys can shoot around for it if you want. That's horrible, man. I was excited to use Jalen Johnson in my team. Let me tell you, that release, his upper, makes him borderline unusable. Manuel quickly up next. Card's fine. I just am not that big of a fan of his release, and he's just too undersized for me. Again, I don't hate a manual quickly. Offensively, he's fine. It's just that release would need to be a little bit better if I were to use the card. Tyus Stones Jones up next. Now, I, I mean, here's the deal for Tyus. He's only 6'1". To make a usable Tyus is really hard. Release-wise, I mean, it's just too slow. I'm sorry, Tyus. I wanted to be able to use you. I just can't. Miles Turner up next. Let's talk about Miles Turner for an extended period of time. First thing I want to say, he can play the power forward position. 
Super important, super valuable. Next thing, he's going to be a stretch big at 6'11". So whether you want to run him at power forward or center, it's up to you. I feel like he's going to come with maybe even anchor, uh, at minimum on gold. Going to have rebound chaser badges like that. But even if you want to run him at the four, I expect his perimeter defense to be decent. And as I'm shooting with him in shoot around, card's fantastic. If you need a budget big and you can get Miles Turner for not super expensive, he is a good get for his price tag. Kobe White, another guy that's been absolutely hooping in real life. Kobe White, let's start here. 6'5", has point guard eligibility, it looks like. Release-wise, super good. Kobe White in 2K is going to be absolutely fantastic. And you guys can say I'm gassing whatever you want. It all starts with his release. His release, so good. The release, I mean, I think it's most similar to is like a kind of similar to a guy like uh like a Derek White, right? Super quick, easy to time, relatively easy to green. Fade looks like the normal fade. I'm a big fan of Kobe White. So Miles Turner, Kobe White, those guys can play at a pretty high level. Sam Miro up next. I know he's been hooping in real life, but this is not a card that's going to be able to play at a very high level in 2K. And I'm not trying to sit here and hate on this card, but let's be honest. Sam Miro, if you know, you know, his release just really kind of slow, kind of baited in my team. Diamond Bam. If you use the Amethyst Bam at the start of the game, you know how good he was. Diamond Bam is going to be one of the best power forwards in the game. I'm going to say it right now because a lot of people need to hear it. Diamond Bam is going to be that good. For Bam, it starts and ends with that release. Super smooth, super easy to time, super easy to green, and he's going to get a decent three ball. Defensively going to be one of the best overall power forwards in the game. Bam, do not sleep on him at the power forward position. Going to be absolutely elite. Bogey, bogey, bogey up next. Here's the deal for the Detroit Pistons. They don't even deserve a, a breakout card. I'm going to be honest. They don't because the Detroit Pistons lost how many games in a row? Y'all are giving them a card. It's just sad. Now for Bogey, I'm not going to lie. He's not going to be good. Release, baited. I mean, if you get it off, it's green. But that's all he's going to be able to do for you guys on the court. Dante DiVincenzo up next. Now, I expect DiVincenzo. I haven't used this release. I'm about to right now. But at the point guard position, I expect him to compete defensively. He's 6'4". His release, as I'm shooting it with right now, it's fine, not great. It's pretty slow. And that's the problem. Even if I compare DiVincenzo to Kobe White. Kobe White is, is taller. His player build's better. And he's got a better release. So it's hard to get to a guy like Dante DiVincenzo, in my opinion. Not very high on him. Scary Terry. Terry Rozier up next. A couple of years ago, guys, I was the one of the biggest fans on Terry, of Terry Rozier at the start of 2K. I feel like his release was so, so good for a specific time. This year, I mean, it's still solid, straight up and down. I just don't think it's super quick. And I think that's the par, pro, big time problem I have with Scary Terry. Joel Embiid, y'all know what you're getting out of Pink Diamond. Joel Embiid going to be able to play defense, going to knock down shots, be one of the best stretch bigs in the entire game. And he also does have power forward eligibility. Joel Embiid is going to be one of the best cards we get tomorrow. Without any questions, his player model is elite. He's going to be solid defensively. And, and again, I'm telling y'all right now, he's going to be one of the best bigs tomorrow. Lock-ins, Cat. His release isn't good. His defense probably is not going to be good. If 2K changes his release, I'll hype up Cat. I want to use Cat as much as anybody. Both as bad as he is defensively as well as a bad release. Can't hype the card up. Jalen Brown, again, release. Going to be on that slower side of things. Going to play a lot of defense, dunk the ball well. But unless they put that release on at minimum quick, it's going to be hard for me to get behind running Jalen Brown. Which side is better? The Eastern Conference definitely outdoes the Western Conference here. Cards I'm most excited about, Joel Embiid, Miles Turner, Kobe White, Bam Adebayo, and Joel Embiid and Bam by themselves can play at an extremely high level. Budget cards, I think Trey Murphy is going to be really solid, as well as Caleb Houston. That's going to wrap it up for our breakdown on the new season rewind. Cards coming tomorrow in the player market and in packs. Remember, might be able to grind for equal chance packs, but as far as this being an entire grind, Probably not going to happen. Drop a like on the video, guys. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Have a blessed day.